Okay, so for today's tutorial, we are making the Santina crossbody bag and tote. This is a small crossbody. You're gonna need your pattern piece, and then um, you're gonna need your cutlass as well. So from your pattern piece, you get two of the exterior on the fold, two of the lining on the fold, and then from the cutlass, you're gonna need your exterior for a pocket, and then a lining piece for the interior zipper pocket. I chose to not have mine just be a little bit of a different color. Okay, and then you're going to need your webbing. You're going to need your zipper by the yard, size number five, with two zipper pulls. I've already uh, put the zipper pulls on mine. You're also going to need for hardware, you're gonna need two of either a D-ring or a triangle ring, something to put your slider, adjuster, and swivel hooks onto, okay? And then um, we're also going to need your, I like to use eighth inch vinyl tape, so it's a double-sided tape. This is something I saw on my website, as long as all the hardware and fabrics you see here as well. You're also going to need some um, clips, and I like to use clips, hairpins and clips, just for different first uh, uses. And then I'm going to, you're gonna need a pair of scissors. I like to have a small pair of precise scissors for when we do our zipper. And a marking tool. Uh, this is a vinyl tool, marking tool, and then just a regular pen. And then snips just to cut your threads. For your sewing machine, you're going to need a uh, size, size 116, a denim Microtex needle, something that's going to be a little bit heavier weight than a normal all-purpose needle. I'm using text 45 on my top and my bottom for thread and I have changed my foot to a it's like a quarter inch Teflon foot okay on my sewing machine so you'll see that here shortly. Okay so today we are making the Santina crossbody tote and it's a small crossbody um, style bag and what you're going to need is everything from your supply list. So you're going to need your front and back that's cut on the fold. That's the exterior. You're going to need two lining pieces. You're going to need, from the cut list, you're going to need one um, pocket piece. This is just for a cargo pocket. And this is for the interior zipper pocket. You're going to need your piece for your side connectors. And then you're going to need your zipper by the yard, number five zipper by the yard with two zipper pulls, um, and then webbing. Okay, so this is one inch webbing, this is one inch hardware, um, a slide adjuster, and your swivel hooks. Optional, you can add on are some tags. Um, so if you purchase a box from me, a, if you get one of these cut and sewed by hand cork labels, I will be replacing it with my um, Stitched Art Boutique. Okay, so we're gonna do some prep work. I like to do some prep work so that way when we start assembling things, everything comes together really fast. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to prep our zipper pocket um, on the lining piece, and then we're going to need to prep our cargo pocket. Okay, so, and then this is for our uh, D-ring connectors. So first I'm gonna do is a D-ring connector. It's very easy. Just gonna do some prep work. I'm gonna get my double-sided, because I am just putting it on the long edge just really close to that long edge. And this is one eighth of an inch tape. So it stays out of our seam allowances. So you don't have to worry about it doing anything crazy, like getting gumming up your needles. Long as you, um, I'm just gonna fold this in half and make a crease mark with my finger just to get a crease. Okay. So that it just opens up so that way I can go ahead and just fold it towards the center. So since this is a waterproof canvas, it does have a little bit of a residue at the back so the double-sided tape sometimes is a little harder to take off because it doesn't want to come off of like this, the residue part with this, the non the water repellent part, I guess. And this is 
prepped and ready to sew. So you can put that aside. Okay, so now for the cargo pockets. So for the cargo pocket, I like to make this bigger than what I need it to be so that we can go ahead and trim off any excess and makes it easier for me. Um, I like to make a nice crease down the center. I'm gonna take these away for just a second. I'm making a crease just down the center. Okay, and I'm gonna actually mark this out so that you guys can see this mark, so that you see what I'm doing. So that is prepped for us to go and take it to the sewing machine. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take this and put it and fold it towards itself. And then we end up taking that folded edge and meeting it towards that center folded line. like so. And then we do the same thing with the other side so then that way when it opens it's got like this nice big opening when we do our cargo pocket. So right now all we're doing is just marking our lines where we're going to be sewing. And just finger pressing them because we don't really need to have it clipped. Like so. And then same thing with this one. Fold it at that line. If you want to what I sometimes do is I take my ruler I bump it right up against there. And then I move the ruler out the way, make sure everything is nice and straight, and crease. And then just crease that right there. Okay, so that's what I do. I just put my edge of my ruler right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and take that to the sewing machine as well. And we'll do those two lines. Flying clips. And that's what we're gonna end up sewing. Right there and on the other line as well. So we can kind of take this to the side as well. Now we're going to prep our back panel. This is our interior back panel that's gonna have our zipper. Okay, our interior zipper. So this is water resistant canvas. So for the water resistance, just the line that makes the, <laughs> when you see the mark, that's the wrong side. That's the right side. So the one you can scratch and you don't see the mark, that's the right side. This is the wrong side. So we want pretty sides touching. And I'm going to make a fold on this as well. I'm gonna fold it hamburger style and then hot dog style. And this is just gonna give us a couple of marks so that we can kind of see what we're working with here. So if you can see those lines. See that there? Okay. So from the folded um, edge, you're going to measure down one inch from that folded line, um, from that folded edge, and then you're gonna make a line straight across. Okay? Then from that line, you're going to make another line that's three eighths of an inch. I'm sorry, three quarters of an inch from that line. Just like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in from each side by a half an inch. And this is essentially making our box. This is making our box for our zipper. Okay, so we are using a number five zipper tape on here. I want my zipper uh, tape to be more visual than normal, so that's why I'm making it um, this big. Actually, I think this is almost an, yeah, that's a little too big. So I'm going to make this three eighths of an inch because that just a little tiny, 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 two, three eighths. Three eighths. Okay. And that's the great thing about this. We're marking on the wrong side, so it's totally okay that you do that. Now, if you have one of those templates that have it that you already just trace into it, that's great. You can go ahead and do that, or you could just follow along with the pattern instructions. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna literally sew 
around this box, okay? So first we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our pretty side facing up. So the waterproof canvas, there's like a side that has, you can scratch and you get the, wa the white marks. That's the wrong side, scratch it. This is the right side. So right side facing up, right side facing down. We're lining up our, our zipper panel, okay? So down here in our boxy bios, we don't want our zipper to go into that. So that's not what we're wanting to do. We want to have it so that it's not laid in there. So we're going to pull it up, okay? So that it is one and a half inches from the top. So when we did this fold here, this is down, this is one inch. We want it to down just a tiny little bit more. So we're going to mark it to one and a half inches. So just take your measuring tool and then oh, bump that down. Okay. Perfect. So that top of that line of that box is one and a half inches down. Sorry, my camera person keeps telling me I'm too close to me. Okay. Oh, don't go past this. Okay, perfect. All right, so then now we're gonna take it and we're just gonna clip this in place. Okay, so we can clip that in place and then we're gonna sew around that box. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're going to measure out the length of our zipper that we need. So I like to pre put my zipper pulls on um, it, and it's okay to mix hardware. So like I'm using black nickel with rainbow gold. I mean, it's totally fine because it's like black rainbow or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure where I want, I'm gonna pull my zipper pull. Actually, I'm gonna do it this way because I want the zipper pull to be like in the middle. Okay, that looks good for me and I'm gonna go ahead and cut. Just like that, okay? So now we're going to prep our zipper. So now that that's nice and down, we can actually, if you wanted to, you could just put some clips like so, just to keep everything nice and flat while you're working with it, it helps. You could press it, but I find that waterproof canvas, once it's cooled off, it just pops back up anyway. So put it to the side. All right, so here, prepping our zipper. I'm gonna take our eighth inch that's tape okay and then push it back down over itself just like that try not to pop it up make sure it's nice and flat just like so so then over here it kind of got a little crooked on me I'm gonna lift it up a little bit and that's the great thing about the double-sided tape is that you can kind of lift it up just a little bit and push it back down so yeah, that looks really nicely. Yeah, I like it. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing to the top. I'm gonna flip it down, peel it. And then flip it back down. So that's how it's gonna look, just like that. Okay, so now that's prepped. We'll take that to the sewing station here in just a second. Let's go ahead and prep our D rings or our side connectors. So we're gonna take sure and make sure that the side that's folded in is gonna be going around the edge and then down, like so. Okay? And then we're gonna clip it. So 
So those things are done. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to, actually I'm put that aside. We'll be back in the next step. We're going to get our other back piece so that we can assemble our cargo pocket. So for the cargo pocket, okay, it's gonna go just like so. So it's gonna go, see how I have some extra laying on? That's perfectly okay because because this is an angle, because this is angled, I wanna make sure I have plenty of it to go on either side. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to actually take these clips off because you see how it has these fraying edges? I want to fold in these edges so that we can finish off our raw edge. So we could just fold in our raw edges like so. We're gonna get some double-sided tape. It's so thin I can't ever tell like where it starts. It's really crazy. Really close to the edge. You could have done this before you did the cargo lines. I just forgot, but hey, that's what happens. Sometimes you forget. You improvise. <laughs> I'm going to do that to the bottom edge as well as the top edge. My print is directional, so I do have a top and a bottom. So this is the top, and that's the bottom. So I'm just going to take the tape off the top edge. Holding it down. Okay, and then do the same thing with the bottom edge. So for the top edge, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew right across that type at that type that top edge. Okay, you don't want to sew it when it's like this. You want to sew when it's nice and um, open first, um, because that actually helps you have the ability to have a cargo pocket. Okay, let's do that. Let's take that to the sewing machine along with our connectors and our zipper pocket piece okay and then um for when we're going to take this to the sewing machine here right after i do a top stitch i am going to take this and sew it on top here so i'm not putting any lines on marking here because um i don't want to you guys to see it off obviously afterwards but what I'm doing, so just so you guys can know, is I'm actually going to measure. Okay, so this is a one inch block here. So you want to make sure it's up above, that, that the bottom is settling right up against there. So all I'm doing really is doing that and doing a half inch up from there. So one and a half inches. Measure one and a half inches and fold. So fold it up by one and a half inches and make a nice finger marking so that I know when I go to take this and sew it down, I'm sewing it right along that folded edge. So we'll do that, we'll do that, we'll do that. Take that to the sewing machine. And we'll be back. Okay, so now you're gonna grab your webbing. And again, just depending on the size that you're gonna be making this for, for an adult or a child. I'm doing a child, I'm doing 32 inches. If you're doing an adult, I would say 42 inches. Right across the eye. So I'm gonna measure it out. 36. I just did it at 48. Just to do. All right, so now here, with your edge here, you're going to want to burn that. So seatbelt webbing is really good about not coming unraveled. 
but it doesn't mean you don't need to burn your edges. You do need to take your time and slowly burn those edges. So it almost makes like a little seal at each end. Okay, so you wanna do that to each end. So now that you've done that, let's make our crossbody strap. Let's prep it. So there really isn't a pretty or wrong side to the webbing, but if you have a webbing that has, I would say, print on it that's only one-sided print, you're gonna want to have this side be up. So the pretty side up. So just so for us to have more instructional, I'm gonna put the red tape like that so you guys can see this is the right side this is the wrong side okay so hopefully that helps with your slide adjuster there's these there's bar there's a wrong side to the bar where you can see where it's folded in on itself and then the top of the bar where you don't see that where it's curled into each other so you're gonna have that right side up okay you're gonna take your your webbing or your strap and you're going to take it and put it right side up. Now wrong side's touching and then right side back up. Okay? So you're just going to loop it in just like that just to cover that bar is what we're doing right now. And it's pretty side up. Okay? So we're going to take this and now we're going to take it and we're going to fold it over itself just like so. And I like to tuck it in just one more time. Tuck it into itself about an inch. Okay, and then clip it. I'm gonna clip this in place. I like to clip it and kind of audition everything before I take it over to the sewing machine, just to make sure everything looks good. All right, that looks good. Okay, so now with the right side still up, okay? So this is the right side, then it turns, and then this is the wrong side up, okay? With the wrong side up, you're gonna take your swivel connector and put it in so that the wrong side is touching the inside of the swivel hook then you're going to push it down on itself so that now that pretty side is facing up and you're going to take it and bring it over to where the hook is go up and over where your slide adjuster is so now it's all pretty sides up you want to make sure nothing is is twisted or anything like that. I am twisted. Hold on. Ah, look at that. I am twisted. Okay. So let's slide this out. This is pretty side up. Okay. Okay. I know what I did. Wrong side up now. Then you thread it through. See, that's why you audition it. I'm going to make sure everything looks good. There we go. So now... This is right side, that's the pretty side, this is the wrong side. So it kind of flips on itself, okay? You're gonna take the last swivel hook, put it to the end here. Again, extend it by two inches. Extend it by two inches on itself, and then fold it back by one inch. This just makes it a little bit sturdier. And clip it just like so. Okay, so now we have our strap, our adjustable strap ready to sew. If you would rather rivet it, you can rivet it. Um, I'm going to sew it down and then I'm going to do an optional rivet so that I can show you guys how to rivet, but I'm going to sew it down first and then show you how you can rivet. All right, so now we're gonna start assembling our bag. So we have to do our zipper part portion first. So pull out your two exterior pieces, your two lining pieces, the rest of your zipper. Um, I'm gonna be changing mine out for this cute Mickey Mouse zipper pull. Um, you're gonna need a med, you're gonna need your ruler, some tape, lighter, and so on. So go ahead and get those supplies together. Okay, so all I'm doing is taking that off. Ooh, everybody always like cries when they do that. <laughs> and 
class. <laughs> All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our zipper, open up the teeth, okay? I like to say that there's like a nose part to the zipper. So there's a part where there's a nose, like it points in, like the front of the train, okay? And then I'm gonna take it and put it right over one side, okay? Then I take the other side and kind of open it up a little bit more and then tuck it up in there. And right now, if you're looking down the barrel, you're gonna see both of them. Like the this side over here is a little too far in. Like I can see it too much, and I'm gonna try to take both of them and push them both down at the same time. So you can see inside the barrel, you can see the teeth. Okay, you're gonna hold it. I like to wrap it around my finger and then push down. And it's on. Just like that. Zipper pull is on. Okay? We're going to prep our zipper so that we can um, put it on our bag. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack open one side and put the zipper almost all the way to it, like so, okay? Now, I like to do this, I like to measure just so you guys can see what we're doing. One inch. See how we've done that? So now that both of them meet up together, they're exactly the same distance away from each other. Okay, so we've done that. Now we need to sew that, tack it down really fast. You can hand sew this, or you can take it to the sewing machine and sew it. I'm gonna sew it really fast, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we've got our zipper prepped, okay, or we've got it all like right there, that's good. Now on this side over here, I like to make sure I put a clip on it make sure that I don't unzip it all the way. So put that to the side for just a second and for our top piece here, we're just gonna get one of our top pieces, okay? Pretty side up. Just make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, right up there. And you are going to mark a three quarters of an inch from each side. Okay, this is important. Our seam allowances are half an inch, so we want to have it be coming in just a little bit more because we want the, the start and the end of our zipper to be a, we need to have a little bit of wiggle room for our strap connectors, okay? So we're gonna measure three quarters of an inch and make a mark. three quarters of an inch and make a mark. Okay. And you'll do that to the to both pieces. But right now I'm just doing this piece right now. So now what we're gonna do is we wanna know this is going to start here and go to there. So that is where we're gonna put our tape. So we're gonna put our tape here to over there. So we're gonna just mark, put our tape on our zipper pole zipper tape, excuse me. We'll put tape on our zipper tape. There we go. 
second we've done that, now we're doing our marks on the other side, three quarters of an inch on each side. Again. sure pretty excited touching that those marks are exactly the same because sometimes you know could get things off a little bit looks good awesome okay so what we're going to do is we're going to put pretty sides touching i'm going to put the top this bottom part of the zipper up on this top of the zipper because i want pretty sides touching you could do a zipper sandwich but i find that when i baste in my zipper before I do the main part, it actually keeps everything straighter because I can really get close to my zipper. Okay, so that's right there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and sew that down and then we'll do the same thing with the opposite side of this. So I'm gonna take that over to the sewing machine so that we can just go ahead and do it all the way since we've already done our cake. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use a hole punch. So this is like a rivet set. Um, the rainbow ones don't come with the Amazon set. I just added those in there. But this is a set that you can get from Amazon and I'll link it in um, the description box below. But it's great because it comes with everything you need to get started and it's only like eight bucks, maybe $15. And it makes this portion so much easier. Um, so you could sew these on. My machine's just acting up today. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make two holes right next to each other and this actually comes with the hole punch portion of it and then the setting portion of it so you are going to need a hammer for this let me go so i just use this little mallet thing that i got from tandy leather this is a plastic and that i also got from tandy leather you don't need to have it if you had a piece of scrap wood it works just fine just don't do it on your table because it will break it will go through your table <laughs> So then that way, it, I'm not having to go through all the layers at once, if that makes sense. Just trying to get through. This is kind of packed, this one's not coming out. There you go. Put it all together. This is a little louder than using a rivet in a rivet press, but it's not as expensive. All right, so we've got that there. Now we're going to do our hole on our bag. So this is another why I like to do this separately. Take this piece and I put it right inside. See that? So rather than, I'm gonna make sure everything's nice and flat. So rather than taking this and doing it straight smack in the middle and, and like cutting through my threads, I'm doing it just to either the right or the left of either one of them. And this mark is about half an inch down. You really want to make sure you're getting through all the layers. It's not really getting through all the layers for me. There's a lot of layers in here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our rivet, okay, and rivet through all of the layers. Get a cap and a rivet. So this is the cap with this is the cap with the post. That's a post, and then this is a cap. So I'm gonna go through. all of those layers there. I'm gonna go through all of these layers here. Make sure to go through the back side like so. Okay, and really wanna make sure you expose the post. Put the cap on. 
And you're going to hear a little snap. Or maybe feel it. All right. So now this is the other part that comes with your tool. Okay. It comes with two sides for a smaller rivet and then the bigger rivet. You want to have the one that fits the best. So you want to put that right up against it. You're going to get the one with the little dome piece over it. Like so. And then you're going to try to stay as straight on as you can. And set it. You'll know it's set because it's kind of like recesses in there. You see that? Perfect. So that is on and we'll do repeat the same process with the other side. So when we're doing this side, I just like to make sure that my zipper is out the way. So you're going to rivet a hole for this just like we did before and put it on.